congratulate uh, the Honourable Member for Dudley South, my near neighbour, on securing this uh, debate. He mentioned Batham's beer, of which I'm a regular uh, consumer and supporter, and Marpado's pub, of which I'm a regular uh, visitor. I may also say that, in fairness to all the other black country beers uh, and drinking uh, places, that the black country is a fantastic place for anybody who loves their beer to come there. The sheer range of craft and uh, real ales there is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I particularly welcome uh, this debate because it, it is framed in the context of the tax regime uh, and pubs. Um, the first point I want to make, and uh, many uh, members here have spoken about the uh, tax regime, is that yes, we do need a change in the uh, tax regime, but alone that will not protect our pub's heritage unless it is allied with a change in the supervision and regulatory relationship between the pub tenant and the pub owning uh, business. Uh, if I can just, first of all, touch on the tax regime, and, and members have covered most of this, there is obviously a case for looking at the alcohol duties, when you have high alcoholic beers and ciders taxed uh, at hugely different rates, that in itself is a reason for looking at them. When you have high alcohol spirits that are taxed at a relatively lower rate, that again is a reason for looking at uh, these duties. But ultimately, I see it as the job as a Treasury to have a comprehensive review of them designed, first of all, to promote social drinking, secondly to uh, sustain uh, pubs, and of course, lastly, to sustain its Jacko regular. My friend, give way. Yes, certainly. Um, I thank my friend for giving way. Given that um, he's just touched on the fact that um, there's differential duty, does he agree with me that it is ludicrous that there is still a subsidy in effect for cider producers producing high? Um, high levels of alcohol content when that isn't the case for beer. There needs to be a level playing field across the sector. I, I, I agree with uh, my honourable friend. That, um, I, I mean, given the, the uh, increase in the consumption of cider and the increased tax revenues on it, I would have thought there was a, a, really a case to look at the relative uh, taxation levels of the uh, two drinks. Business rates has been mentioned. Um, I will not go over the details of it, but we do have this ludicrous situation whereby the more you invest in your business, the higher the turnover, very often you get a huge increase in the level of business rate as well. I had one example given to me of somebody who took over a pub that had traded at 200,000, raised it to 700,000, and then found that his uh, um, business rate went from £8,400 to £37,000, that he did get it reduced to 24000 but the mere fact that you had such a big increase, then you had a revision of it, would seem to demonstrate that the uh, process for evaluating business rate is deeply flawed. And whilst I recognise the attempts of the government to do something about it, what we really need is a very comprehensive review of business rate that, uh, to be geared in such a way as to promote and reward investment rather than to uh, penalise it. Yes, I'll give away to you. Just, just briefly, he's absolutely right. I, I've had some experiences with pubs putting in the investment and then finding themselves penalised. But then when the challenge is put in, they're saying the challenge is taking a very, very long time and it's very difficult to get an explanation as to the, fi the final figure is arrived at. There is not the transparency over the rateable system that there should be. I, I totally agree with the uh, Honourable uh, Member. The, the process is opaque and would appear to be in often uh, perverse as well. And I, I think there's a big case not only for revising it, but for making the whole process far more transparent than it now is, so that anybody investing in their business can get a very clear idea of what the potential financial penalties, if that's the word, uh, would be for that in investment. I went, want to briefly 
touch on the uh, pubs code and the pub code adjudicator. My honourable friend, the member for Chesterfield, uh, mentioned uh, this issue. Uh, as the former chair of the uh, BIS Select Committee and a member of its predecessor committees, time and time again we examined the issue around the relative balance of power between the pub tenant and the pub owning uh, business and the relatively low level of income that tenants running even the most successful pubs uh, obtain from all their efforts relative to the revenues that were accrued from the pub owning business. And of course the uh, um, pub code was agreed by uh, the uh, Secretary of State for uh, Biz uh, in the previous uh, coalition government, and I give him credit for that, and a pub code adjudicator was appointed to act um, to adjudicate and to try to um, ensure that there was a fair balance of risk and reward between uh, the two parties. Uh, the, I, I think it's fair to say that the appointment of Paul Newby was controversial. Uh, a lot of uh, concerns were raised on, on the basis of the evidence that we're getting back from the tenants. Those concerns were well founded and it does not seem to have affected the rate of closures of uh, pubs uh, whatsoever. And indeed, um, the number of tenants who are still finding that the reward they get from all their efforts is totally inadequate from the level of this effort does not seem to have changed either. And so I welcome the fact that the government is about to undertake a review of the working of both that uh, code and the adjudications. And I would point out that the essential thing is for the pub's code <laughs> adjudicator to act as an adjudicator, not just as an, a, 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 enabling a negotiation to take place between the pub code and the tenant, which actually reinforces the imbalance of power between uh, the two of them. All too often, pub tenants find themselves not only negotiating against the pub company, but negotiating with their solicitors as well. And, of course, they are not in a position to have the equivalent to, uh, rate of, of legal advice and so on and so forth. So I would just conclude by my remarks by saying saving the pub involves two things, a radical transformation in the taxation, but also the reinforcement of the legal protections for the pub tenant against the pub owning business. Jamie Stewart.